The most important thing for you to know about the influenza vaccine is that it's one of the most dynamic vaccines available. It changes for every year because of new antigenic variants produced by antigenic drift. And that means that the vaccine you received for last year's outbreak is not going to protect you from this year's outbreak. Now before talking about the vaccines themselves and how they're made, let's talk about how our immune system responds to influenza so that we know what the vaccines are trying to stimulate. One of our primary immune defenses against influenza is neutralization of the virus with antibodies. And what do these antibodies target? Well, since hemagglutinin and neuraminidase are the main exposed proteins in the virus, the antibodies should target one of those. And it turns out that hemagglutinin antibodies are the most important. And they prevent viral entry into our cells because hemagglutinin is what binds to the sialic acid on our cells. And we can actually measure the serum antibody responses to the influenza vaccine using a serum hemagglutinin inhibition assay. So now let's talk about the actual vaccines. It can be categorized based on their valency, which refers to the number of influenza A and B strains included, and whether they are inactivated or live attenuated. Please note that the types and composition of influenza vaccines is constantly changing, so check the CDC website for up-to-date information. So as far as valency, right now there are trivalent and quadrivalent vaccines that cover three and four different strains respectively. And right now in the 2016 to 2017 flu season, the trivalent influenza vaccines contain hemagglutinin and neuraminidase components from two subtypes of influenza A, H1N1 and H2N3, and one influenza B lineage. Meanwhile, the quadrivalent vaccines contain components from two influenza A and two influenza B viruses. And then as far as inactivated versus live attenuated, let's talk about how each type is made. Inactivated influenza vaccines are developed by first growing the influenza virus in embryonated chicken eggs, then concentrating the virions, and then chemically inactivating them by disrupting the envelope with detergents, and then finally by partially purifying the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase protein. And the end result is given as an injection. And even though eggs are used in the process, even egg allergic people can receive the vaccine as long as they're observed in a healthcare setting because severe reactions to the vaccine are really unlikely. People who have had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine, however, regardless of whatever component was thought to be at fault, should not receive any other doses. Although there is a totally recombinant vaccine that doesn't have any egg at all that can be used as a potential alternative. Now, as far as live attenuated vaccines, they're actually not being recommended in the 2016 to 2017 flu season, but they are out there. They do exist. And the way these are made is by genetic reassortment of attenuated influenza master strains with the seasonal hemagglutinin and neuraminidase genes. So that way your body can see the seasonal hemagglutinin and neuraminidase genes, but the infection can't get out of hand because the virus is attenuated or weakened. In what way is it attenuated? Well, the master strain is grown in cold temperatures so that it evolves to replicate only in the colder temperatures of the nasal respiratory tract. And that's why this vaccine is given as a nasal spray. So why isn't this vaccine recommended? Well, because it's shown decreased efficacy for the past few seasons. Another disadvantage is that since the attenuated virus can still infect cells, although it's generally safe for immunocompetent hosts, it should not be given to immunosuppressed patients who could be at risk for an illness caused by the vaccine virus. 